Hi guys, Jake and Marissa, back in for more Let's live reactions to This is Kezu Sentai Pat Ranger. Pew pew, pew pew pew, pew pew. Alright, so, um, not, uh, not too much, uh, big news coming to mind at the moment as far as Power Ranger stuff this week. Uh, I know there was the big changeover from, uh, Saban Brands to Hasbro. But that was last week. Um, but that was transitioning from one month to the next. And we got our PMC tickets. We did get our PMC tickets. Um, well, we've, re we've reserved our flights. Um, we have that handled before. Um, I mean, I, 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 okay. I, I got your PMC tickets. I've, His I, tickets he's had for a while. I, I'm going to be there on Saturday yeah. and Sunday, but not on Friday, because I'm flying in late after actually going to work on Friday. I'm, I'm currently planning on, uh, on helping out again, as I usually do, although, you know, a lot of stuff is still, we're still a month out, so plenty of stuff is still in flux as far as, yeah. um, as far as what the actual schedule is. They always, they always wait until pretty close to the convention before locking down an event schedule just to make sure that they know, well, uh, who's going to be sure there. I'm pretty sure the last time I was there, they actually gave out a revised event schedule on Saturday morning. That's not uncommon. <laughs> um... Yeah, you know, stuff changes at the drop of a hat, and I'm curious to see how uh, how Hasbro's new you know stewardship of the franchise may or may not influence. Affects the con, yeah. Yeah, um, I know at the very least, uh, San Diego Comic Con is coming up. That's another big thing uh, where apparently they're going to be having a bunch of uh, exclusives, that, like exclusive uh, comic book stuff and merch, etc. Um, yeah. so, um... Jake just found out the cover variant that he wants so badly is going to be a oh, Comic-Con exclusive, so I'm not, I'm not, get I'm it. not much of a, of a, um, variant collector or anything. I just think it's kind of cool that they, uh, they're doing a Hyperforce variant, uh, for MMPR 29. Um... It even has burrito. Yeah, which is amusing. Um... Oh, what I, I will admit, the one cover that I do really want uh, out of varying covers is I'd love to get the, uh, there's going to be an, an Andros uh, Sacrificing Zordon cover uh, for one for one of the issues. I think it might be 29, actually. Um, so that, that one's one that I want to keep an eye open for. Um, but yeah, Shattered Grid still rolling along. Um, I, I get... My comic straight from Boom, so I, I usually, usually end up gets getting them it. Usually them a little bit late because they have to wait for them to come in the mail. Yeah. So, like, it's like because they come out on a given day, but I don't think Boom drops them in the mail until the day they come out. Yeah, I usually end up getting things. Uh, I usually end up getting, like, Go Go Power Rangers and Mighty Morphin uh, at the same time. Yeah. And it's like, you know, so it'll be like, a week or two after the second one of those two has come out, so I'm I'm often a, a couple weeks behind. Yeah. Um, I might start, um, you know, trying to support local comic book shops a little bit more and try to pick up my variants there, because there is a, a comic book shop that opened up right near us. So I'm gonna try and be better about that. I'm just I, I'm very horribly cheap person <laughs> when it comes say, to spending any them, money on myself. I, I don't understand why you would get them, I mean, I guess just to keep up, but you could always just use, like, what, like, Comically or whatever. Oh, uh, either the Comixology? Co Comixology or whatever, so that you don't wind up with two copies, but... Well, I mean, Comixology is, you just have a, you would have a digital copy of the same thing. Well, it's... You'd still be paying for it. Yes, I understand. Yeah. My point is more that a digital copy seems to me like having a digital copy and a paper copy is more useful than having two paper copies. That's just my personal That's opinion. At least I be, could be wrong. There, there's a, at least be a little variety with the variant cover. That's true. Um, what if you wind up with the two of the same cover? Well, that's why I would want to try and buy a variant cover there, because I'm less likely to receive a variant cover in the mail. Oh, okay. Um, but I still usually wait just to be on the safe side. Um, and by that point, things are sold out because Chatter Grid's been going so fast. So fast. Um, so, but since I haven't received any variant covers straight from Boom so far, I think it's probably a safe, safe bet that I probably... If you get I a variant probably, cover in the door, it'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, I won't get duplicates. Is, 
Um, anyway, so uh, so that's what. So not not too much new stuff. Just uh, ramping up to the to the convention season. I made panko um, breaded chicken. Yeah, we just had dinner. Um, as far as power reviews, I uh, did a fair amount of filming this week. Um, we did, we had uh, like five people over to film last Tuesday, so we got we got some good stuff shot. Yeah, and um, I shot with you, well, that was right before we did the video, yeah. so they know about that already. Yeah, if, after we did last been, week's... If you've been keeping up, you know, with 83 and 84, you know how complex the show has gotten at this juncture. Yeah, we just realized recently we have like 11 prominent cast members, not including the, you know, like, the one-timers and stuff like that. We have 11 characters we're dealing with at this point in the story. Yeah. Which is quite a bit. <laughs> 83 There's and 80... 11 actors we have to deal with. Uh, yeah, 83, 84, 85 all have, uh, 11 characters with, you know, multiple lines throughout the episode. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's not even... And, uh, that's gonna be fairly consistent through the next few episodes as well. No, excuse me, that's 11 characters and 10 actors. Yeah. Yeah, because you're two characters. Um, and that's not even counting, like, little cameo stuff. Right. Uh, like, we, there was, like, one agent that was a quick little cameo um, in 83, if you're, you know, paying attention. Um, and that started to fall asleep, so that tells me that we probably should be... So there, that was our quick little five-minute catch-up on what we're up to. Yay! Um, oh, and uh, sorry for not saying happy uh, Independence Day last week. We totally blanked on that because because we, we recorded on the third. We recorded it the day before, and then it didn't occur to us until I was po it didn't occur until I was posting. I'm like, oh wait, today is Independence Day, and we didn't mention it. Yeah, and some people were honest in the comments, and I was like, to be fair, we yeah. filmed it on the third. It's, yeah, it's true. Um, and this is this is not day that you're looking at it either. This is yesterday. Yeah. Um, yesterday for you. You're watching it tomorrow for us. Yeah. But yeah, this summer's flying by. I'm I'm turning uh, I'm turning 33 next week. It's my birthday coming up. So it's just like I hope hopefully I can get power reviews done before I turn 34. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I've I've been trying to to get catch up. You know, I got a, I've got a lot of uh, good editing work done uh, this week. I recorded all my voiceovers for 85. I'm going to try and record all my voiceovers for 86 by the end of this week. Finish updating the Phantom armor, all that stuff. Um, and I've got a pretty good spot for a transition to the new armor, too. So that's going to be good. There are children shouting outside. Yeah, pretty loudly. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's switch things up. It's 8 o'clock at night. Go back inside, children. It's summer. Let them have their fun. So, it is, uh, so we're up to episode 22 of... Kaito Sentai Lupin Ranger. This is Kaito Sentai Pat Ranger. Love, Love is, is an, an indispensable part, part of life. life. And... Bing. <sighs> Magical sound. Oh, we're picking up right where we left off with the little, uh... So what are you here. doing? What are you doing? Are, are we getting more of this conversation? I didn't think we were going to... I figured they were going to leave us hanging on this. Uh, let me chat. Let's chat. Oh, you're having an actual chat. Mm. Oh, we did not call what he was going to be asking for. What does he want to borrow? Oh, and he didn't tell them he was joining the global police. And I'm willing to bet he didn't tell him about the... What did, did he... What did, has he not told him about the... Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, interesting. Some sort of submarine sort thing? Or is that is that another train? Merci beaucoup. That looks like another... It's clearly another vehicle of some kind. Yeah. 
So I guess that's a, that maybe that's going to combine with his pre-existing sword so he can form an egg sword. Everything's a little sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping things vague. What did he bring? So, what did they bring to the boss? <laughs> Some sort of edible thing? I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing. Party of four. Really? あ、初めて見かかるお連れ様ですね。ですね。えっと、俺とは初対面じゃないですよね、ケイちゃん。やはり覚えていたか。いや、because he made him when he was doing his whole gentleman the You're like the weirdest undercover agent ever. So it's all good. So, both sides of Besides, your life now. Besides, Kairi's having a lot of fun with this. This is very silly. Noelle is, is so strange. It is uh, how he's toying with everybody. Is he going to know Umika's name? Oh, okay. Jealous? No? Okay. No? It would appear no. that Noel is jealous. No, no, he's not jealous. He is shipping. He is shipping hard. You're right, he's shipping. Because he's, he's... He's French. I come from the land of Amor. Oh, no. <laughs> That's enough. Good morning. Good morning. Shipping. You can say shipping, it's okay. Oh. Uh, mysterious treasures no left by the phantom thief Austin Lupin known as the Lupin collection have been stolen by the ganglers the thieves who fight to recover what they've lost the police who fight to protect world peace music whose side are you on why is music all of a sudden inserted in there that's weird that was not there before yummy no not Catch me if you can. Destiny. Oh, cuckoo, saru. On to no. No, you won't. Rikai, suru. Onatsu. Mongai, fuchutsu no collection. Hold up. Lupin. Barry, you can. Gotta chase you up. Train, train, train. I think it's a submarine. It looks like a submarine. It looks like a submarine, but everything else that he has is trained, so maybe it's a fancy. Well, train. maybe he's just going to give it to the Lupin Rangers as a peace offering after. I mean, he, he's got like three and a half trains already. I say three and a half because one of the, his trains is two trains. Fair enough. Phone is Really? Noel did this. Of course he did. Why? 
to get him back here to ship him more. Really? Really? Noel. Noel, please stop. Why? Also, did they just not notice that Noel didn't walk with them? Noel, you're ridiculous. I'm, I'm, I'm not actually on, on, very much on board with this ship. She doesn't really seem to be too into it. Exactly, that's why I'm not really... It, it's sort of like a Jake and Gia situation, except uh, even more so obvious that she's not into it. Because we're actually seeing her side of things. She, is she warming up to him? What's the deal here? We're having a little moment of introspection. Right? Dangler. Yep. So what is he collecting? Is he collecting love? What? I told you it looked like one of those things that they use to collect, to, to do the fish game at the... Oh. He turns people into goldfish and collects them. Okay, yeah, we'll cover on. Just, just go. No, no, go. Get out of there. Ah, you're a goldfish. He's a fish now. Uh, I told you it looked like one of those things with the goldfish game. Yeah, no, you're right. It's just, I, I don't quite get what the deal is with the gourd. Who is she? Oh, okay. Apparently other people know who she is. She said she's from the bakery, yeah. so they must get their bread there. I guess so. Of course other people know who she is. Yep. That's unfortunate. Interesting how they're not they goldfish. They could all be blown into diddly diddly bits. Little goldfish thing. Ah, uh, that seems unpleasant. So, wait, how many, so, how many goldfish people does he have now, and... Like, a dozen, not including he, whichever ones he gave to, uh... Did he just give people to, to the boss? To Boss Dogriano? No, he just gave people to, uh, Gauch, because he said Gauch could have them. Did she eat people? I don't know. I she may have eaten some people. Uh, he feels bad about it. Also, uh, Noel, why are you still staying behind at the restaurant? Why having the rest are the rest I'm of the Pad Rangers like? I'm confused here because, I mean, how are they not going to give themselves away with Umiko-chan in the gourd? Yeah. When they show up with just two, the, how, they're going to raise suspicion again. Yeah. But, the Pad Rangers are not right. We've established this. Bottle. If you run into him, get into his bottle. Seriously? So, so you want them to become goldfish? Well, I mean, they'll be able to morph without raising suspicion. So seven. He's got seven. I feel like this is based off of some Time to of shove legend. some more humans in here. So
Correctly, it is both are you okay and yes, I am okay. So I think it's kind of like okay, I've, okay. I've, I've heard I've heard daijobu as a as a word before. I wasn't quite sure what it was. I, I think it's both that a looks question. Like a, that looks like a painted water water pistol. I think it's both a question and a statement, though. Yeah. Like if 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 you are okay, you answer daijobu daijobu. Yeah. I don't know exactly how it translates though, since it's both a question and an answer. Doing the wishy camera thing. Still have no clue what that wishy camera effect is. Me Feels like it's a like it's a GoPro on a stick or something. Definitely got like a, a fish eye lens. Ten different ways to use the word "dangerous." Oh, fun. Nice. Ambiguity in Japanese. I don't know what. Is wait, is that, the, is that the New York skyline for some reason? Or no, no. it's not. It, what is that skyline that we all of a sudden have? It looked like it was like the the Chrysler Building or the Empire State Building or something, but there were a bunch of them for some reason. Dooby dooby dooby. Oh, we get to see his uh, his Mackie Mac. So they 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 have to fire it, to fire the the other ones because I guess I guess his um his yeah, his changer speaking. doesn't seem to be modular. So technically speaking, it should be a question: Daijobu desu ka? To which you respond, Daijobu desu. But when you get casual, you oh. start losing the other words. Oh, we're getting the combo. Mm. Which makes sense. Fire and thunder coming up. Desu seems to be a word that just disappears the more casual you get. Yeah. Okay. X E X. This is interesting. It's a state of being verb. Oh. Like so it's actually so it's actually combining as an X. That's fascinating. What? That's a lot of spinny spin. X Emperor Slash. Okay. That is an uh, that is an interesting combo. So, not a submarine. Well, he didn't use the sub. Oh, I thought that's what that white arm is. No, the, this is the same, uh, the this same three swords he's been using. Been well, three or four, however you want to count it. That was a little too tight. Awesome! Oh, it's ending my goal? Sure, why not? Okay, so, so it looks like those swords have become arms for the others, become his legs. I, I think. Or no, wait. Or no, one becomes one. Oh! Leg. Yep, this just, boy's broken! Yep. Game over! Well, that's why they're bringing in the, another big gun there with the gold. Are we getting, are we gonna get a com uh, combo switch on this guy? I wonder. Because right now this seems... This yeah, I was going to say, can he, like, switch so that... I'm, uh, oh, yes, here we go! Yes. He's going to do a cartwheel, and there. Yep, I knew it. It's gold, uh, yep. Now gold's on top, silver's on the bottom. So, okay, so he's got... Um... He's, he's running away! His main sword is gold and silver, and then his backup sword is swords also have gold and silver. Right. So he's got the main, one main sword with a auxiliary on top and one, the main sword with an auxiliary on the bottom. Yeah. Yep. That's a cool Gatling gun. 
I don't know. This guy is like just a little bit. It's okay, sure. Why not? So he's like Ooh, weird gourd was supposed oh. to be like a fish bowl. Okay. I mean, you are supposed to flip the little fish into yeah. a bowl, but the pictures I've seen, they look more like a regular bowl than like a wax gourd. Okay, so one was X Emperor Slash and the other was X Emperor. Never put too many fish yeah. into one bowl. Never pat your chickens before they're hatched. That is a due to uh, your future. Yeah. Nice. Stylish. That is an interesting Megazord combo. It's essentially a four Zord uh, Megazord, which you do not see very often. And they really do play up the excess. There really is something to be said for Yahaba. Is that the teeth thing? Mm -hmm. She's just not that into you! Yeah. What did, what did she say again? <laughs> what is a boy anyway? I don't speak French. I don't know what she said. Did, did she say he was like the best big brother ever or something? Oh, I'll, I'll rewind and double check that after this little preview. I, I, I think oh I my goodness! Cooking competition Where against you? Gangler. That looks fun. Shut up and eat it. The cartwheel change is really cool. I wasn't, I, I wasn't quite sure what to expect from that Megazord when I when I first saw the images of it, but that's an interesting combo, and I'm I, I like that they actually came up with a somewhat different form of combo and transformation there. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, right, so let's see if I can... What did Umika say? Okay. So... For not being able to protect you. Yeah, they couldn't have done it without Noelle. Yeah. Okay. And, and we looked away for like know. two seconds and missed... And even then... But even then, thank you for coming. Okay. You're welcome. And... Sakuya? What'd she say? I don't know what... You're a pretty good person. Okay. Uh, better get going. Okay, that was it. She just said that he was a pretty good person. That was the line we missed. I don't know where the sound went on that when I rewound it just now. It doesn't matter. We got to see what it said. Um. But yeah, the 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 new Megazord combo is is. Pretty interesting. I've I don't think I've seen a combination like that before. That's that X combo. No. I'm actually kind of looking it up right now just to. I mean, get in many ways, it kind of it. does remind me of some things we've seen with other train zords, though. Where yeah. the train itself just becomes all the zord all on its own. Oh yeah, where it becomes the cartwheel thing zord. is yeah, completely course. new. No, that that's the main thing I'm I'm referring to. The cartwheel is is cool. But like, I'm pretty sure that. Um, the structure, like, being made of, like, four cars or whatever. Okay, the other one was X-Emperor Gunner. That was, I, I missed that. Um, what was the first one? I saw and it. was X-Emperor Slash, Slash and X-Emperor Gunner. And Gunner, okay. Okay. But, yeah, that's a, that's a interesting, uh, interesting setup there. Yes. Um. Huh. Flash, life but, you know, it plays into his whole thing of being X. Even his Zords make an X. I was not actually expecting that. I, I could see with Slash there was that sort of diagonal aspect, but I didn't realize it was actually, a, that was how they merged together. Yeah, because diagonal. you were talking about it being the legs, being the auxiliary Zords, and I'm like, I don't think so. And it's like, oh, no, wait, one... Because looking at one now, you can see there's, an there's one Aug sword, there's the other Aug sword, there's one main sword, there's the other main sword. Right. So on the, and in Slash, they're on the left, his left side, and then in Gunner, they're on the right. They're on his right side. That's cool. I like that. And then I'm sure they'll be. She's just not into you. 
I don't know what to make of this of this ship. I mean, I, I'm afraid that they're probably actually just going to go with it like they did with Jake and Gia. I don't know. Cause, cause but this she's is, this is even, this really is apprehensive. And say. she didn't even want to, like, she, she let him on a little bit, yeah, but she was doing it for thiefy reasons. Yeah. And Noel needs to, like, back off because he seems to want them to get together for real and not just for manipulative reasons. Yeah, not no, that she well, he just, he just, anyone, but he just wants to see to two people get together and doesn't seem to really care if they're both into it or not. So long as one of them's into it, then he wants to see them together. This is why real life shipping is a bad idea. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, and, I've said it before when, like, obviously well, you and I are married, right? Yeah. And we're co-hosts. And a lot yeah. of other people who do uh, shows together are married or live in with yeah. one another. But sometimes you'll have someone who has, like, a girlfriend or boyfriend on their channel, but they don't live together. Yeah. And people start saying things, like, in the comments, like, when are you going to move in together? When are you guys going to get married? When are you guys going to get together? And I'm just like, yeah. this is a bad thing. Yeah, it's just kind of awkward. You shouldn't sometimes. advance your uh, relationship because somebody else wants you to. Yeah. Whether that is somebody in your YouTube comments or Noel. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... Well... Real world shipping is a bad idea. Yeah, he's... Well, he's he's being dropped into this not knowing any of the history or anything. Real so world shipping is still a bad idea. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she's... she's People get way too invested in other people's relationships. She, she's been pretty clear from the beginning that she's not into him. No, she's not into him. Like, maybe she's she likes him a little bit more now than she did at the beginning, because, you know, he came on really strong at the beginning, and that okay. was off-putting, and now they've gotten to know each other a little bit better. But even so, there's been no indication that she has any romantic interest in him. No, no. Outside of occasionally she manipulates that for... To get information. Right. Um, and even then, she... Like, they went out to dinner once. And nothing came of that. And she pretty much shut with that. And he should move on. And ganglers happened. But yeah, it's... <laughs> they tried to have a date with ganglers happened. Like, the reason I say it's worse than, um, than Jake and Gia is because with Jake and Gia... Um, we didn't really know her feelings regarding Jake. Yeah, they left that really ambiguous. We but didn't... because we're seeing things separately, we've seen her alone with the Lupins being all like, I yeah. don't wanna! Exactly. We know. It's, this is like Jake and Gia, if we had an episode focused on Gia, where she talked about how uncomfortable Jake makes her. Yeah. Like, that... Sakuya, stop. Like, you, you seem like you'd be... I keep wanting to like him as a character, but the whole thing with him and Umika is just super uncomfortable. He's got a serious case of nice guy TM. Yeah. Not to um, be confused with an actual nice guy, but every nice guy TM like he's, thinks they are. It's an sort of the nice same. Guy. It's sort of the same thing with with Jake and Megaforce, where he's you know he's kind of a likable, goofy character, but he has this weird hang up with regards to to, to the Yellow Ranger. Yeah, and you know. Uh, a lot of people, say for example Noel, or people who were watching that show and were into that ship, yeah. you know, the feeling they have is, you know, he's a good guy, he's a decent fella, so they should show, so so she is therefore obligated to give him a chance. I mean, at this point... But she's not interested! And, and she kind she's of She's running away! She kind of has given him a chance to an extent. They did go out to dinner together. Yeah. Um... She's running I mean, away. Yeah, it was under. It was under. She's sprinting. I'm sorry, we've got it paused on her sprinting away. That's true. Um, I mean, yeah, the the dinner was under false pretenses, but like, she's been nice to him. She's been polite to him. She's also. It's never like it's it's always going to be awkward and wrong to try and start a relationship um, with someone at their place of work where they are working in a service industry. Yeah, that's that's. She's the waitress. She has to wait on him. That's really inappropriate. That she can't like hitting on your waitress is weird. Yeah. Because yes, they, they, you may yeah, like the being, waitress very much, being, but she is required by her job to be polite to you. Yeah. So you can't get a read on whether or not she actually likes you. Like you, you, you maybe you, you could ask. You know, if if you have a good com conversation, be like, is you know. As respectfully as possible, 
You seem think, like a really interesting I think person. The furthest you could really go would be to leave your phone number for her. Yeah, that's fair. If she wants if she to calls, call you, yeah, I think that's probably that's the, okay. best, the best way to do it. Leave your phone number if you're interested, but do not like try and get someone to go on a date with you while they are working at a service job. Because it is entirely possible for you to hit it off with somebody. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and. And they like you too, but it, but you're not going to be able to get an accurate read on that while they're in a service job. They're going to be all like, "Hey, hun, can I get you another bottle yeah, of water? They're going. Can I get you some cheese? Yeah, you know. They're going to. Would be you like another pastry? You. They're going to be. You're not getting a, an actual feel for how how they feel about you. And there's a clear power imbalance because they are literally being paid to provide you with a service. Exactly. So um, if you were to ask them outright, they might feel like they're under pressure to say yes, or they might get complained about to their boss by the customer saying that the waitress was rude. Yeah. I mean, it goes the other way, too, because yeah. there have been uh, stories of like guys that are like uh, waiters or bartenders or whatever who wind up having customers that will not leave them alone. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it goes it, either way. Yeah. It's not like a, a women thing. It's like, just because your bartender listens to all your problems doesn't mean he likes you like that. Yeah. And that's... Do not wait for him by his car. That is creepy. Yeah. People need to learn boundaries and, like... Re just sort of recognize... Apparently, sometimes police officers have this problem, too. Yeah. Where, like, they'll get called to a situation and they'll, like, rescue people or whatever, and then the people will, like, get attached. Mm, yeah. They'll be like, you saved me from the burglar. And I, How can I ever repay you? And they're and like, I, imagine, I have a wife! Please get off And me. I imagine it, it probably goes the other way, too, with some, some level of, uh, of white knighting. Oh, I'm sure. Um... I'm sure. But I, th I think there's this... There's this weird thing where people just kind of need to recognize that it's we, okay for the other person to not be into you. It's okay for them to say no and for you to walk away from that. Like... I mean, that's, that's even just in regular life. Yeah. The problem... He, the, th things are compounded further here, though, by the fact that he primarily visits her at her place of work where she's required by her job to be polite and nice yeah. and, you know... I mean, they've become very friendly with... with the, the two groups have become very friendly. Yes. Um, so it, is, it has quite kind honestly, of grown beyond Quite honestly, if that, they had, say. you know, run into each other on the street... Yeah. And it wasn't in the course of her job, that would be different. Yeah. Like when, like, for example, so a, a lot of times, for some reason, Kyrie and... Uh, uh, K Kichiro. Kichiro are like yeah. running into each other in a park. That's yeah. different. Yeah. Just because you know someone from their job doesn't mean you can't ask them out on neutral ground. Uh, I know! He's a friend from work! Um, on neutral ground. But yeah. you just, you wouldn't do it at their job because right. they're trying to serve you there. Yeah, exactly. Um, but don't wait for them for, at their car after work either because that's not neutral ground. That's creepy. Don't wait for anyone by their car after work. Unless they said, meet me by my car after work. Yeah, so, so yeah, this episode definitely had the problem of focusing on one of the more problematic aspects of this show, which yeah, is, is that Yeah, is that shit. Sequoia can't take a hint. Um, and, but, and, 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 and then Noelle... And then Noelle in on it. And then Noelle... Se Sequoia has a bad enough time taking a hint to start with, and then Noelle goes and eggs him on. Yeah, and honestly... I will admit, it, it does seem like it would fit with his character. Yeah, oh no, I, that's... Noel that's, is a troll! He is. Um, I think he, he, he recognized that there were negative consequences to his actions. I don't think he recognized that... But he only recognized the negative consequence of Umika is now captured by a gangler. Yeah. He did not recognize any negative consequences in the... Trying making your teammate feel really uncomfortable. I mean, to be fair... His his trying to bring them together thing, there was almost nothing to that. It was he 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 wanted well, them to have the a phone comes. was was very little. The, yeah. the problem was is when he was all over Sakuya going, you should go after her. Are you doing love? Yeah. And it's like now you're giving like Sakuya 
might have gotten a clue eventually, but he's not going to get a clue with Noel all over him yeah. going, go get the girl, go get the girl, go get the girl. And that's, a, and that's a big thing that I think a lot of people do to each other, where it's they, they, they figure, oh, you, you know, you're into this girl, you got to go after her, you know, not knowing what the other side of it is. Um, and not knowing, you know, if the person if may have already person asked them out and gotten shot down. Yeah. Like. Like, people will talk about how, uh, when dating, you need to be persistent. When they're nah, talking about being really. persistent in the area of dating, what they mean is, if you strike out with one girl, don't give up on dating entirely. Go find another one. Yeah. Don't be persistent on one person. person. That's, this we call stalking. Yeah. That's not cool. Once again, whether it's a dude or, or a lady. It yeah. doesn't matter if somebody has given you the no and you still keep turning up going, are you sure? Are you sure you don't want to date me? Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure? And, this we call stalking. And I, w and I will admit, there are cases where, you know what? You get hung up on a person. You get emotionally attached. Uh, but the thing is, and the, the thing that you need to recognize is that is your thing to resolve. Not theirs. Yeah, that is something for you to work. Like, um, without getting into specifics, you know, back when I was in college, before we dated, I, there was someone who, uh, I did, who I dated for a little bit, and things ended awkwardly. I will not get into details on that. And I was very hung up on that person for a very long time afterwards. You were very hung up on your ex, yes. Um, and it made interactions between... Uh, it made interactions awkward because we still ran the same social circles. Yeah. And, you know... And so did I. And, yeah. and you were still hung up on her after we started dating. Which I got over. Yes, you did. And, and, I, I, and I warned you that. I, 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 I warned you. And I warned you of that when we started dating, oh, yeah. that I was still dealing with emotional attachment to to that previous relationship. But you knew it was... Okay. Um, and it was one of those things where it is difficult to get through, because you do you, you want to be with that person, but you are struggling with recognizing that person does not want to be with you in that way. Uh, we did try to be friends for, for quite some time, uh, largely because we ran the same social circles. Yeah, because it could be real awkward to be, like, rivals with an ex that's just there all the time. Yeah. Um, as, as you guys know, we've done a lot of community theater, and this was college theater, and that's a tight-knit community. A very tight-knit community. So everybody knows everybody. Everybody. So there's, there's no real way to, if, if you have a relationship with somebody in that group, there's, you can't just really avoid that person if you both want to continue doing theater and hanging out with your friends. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a big enough group, and yet still somehow everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you say it's a, it's a big group, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like a couple between, dozen between, people. Yeah. I was going to say, like 60 or so people. That's fair. But they always are hanging out in the same places at the same time because there's these, you know, you have that many people you working have a on a theater, given show. And everybody just hangs out in the theater. Although um, apparently they don't do that so much anymore. And and it was it's something that was They've locked it down a little tighter, but it used yeah. to be you just walk into the theater yeah. when there wasn't like it like usually if you're walking into the theater it's because you have a rehearsal yeah. or because you're coming to see a show or whatever. But all the people who were involved in that community would just sort of all just gravitate toward the lobby. Yeah. <laughs> And they just all be there doing homework or whatever. So, so I, I do recognize that you can get hung up on a person. Yes. And it can be very difficult coping with that, especially if you are in a situation where the two of you are supposed to be friendly with one another. Yes. Um, but this. But is... the important thing to keep in mind throughout is that that is your hang up, not theirs. And this gets into one layer more of complication. Yeah. Because yes. That was hecka awkward. Yes. But you guys also did actually date. So right. That's you true. had like you had like hung up on X breakup thing going on. Yeah. So, you know they never even really dated. That's true. They went on a date, but that's not the same as being boyfriend girlfriend. That's, you know? that's fair. The, so the main he was thing... basically hung up on someone who has given him very little yeah, who, who's been very consistent in telling him yeah. to go away. Whereas usually when someone's, like, 
attached to their ex. They're just kind of like, yeah. we were together, we were in love, what happened? The, the important, the She's most important thing is that... She's not in love with you, Sequoia. She never has been and your, never will be. Your emotional attachment to another person is your, your problem. Your problem. And, yeah, that can make things awkward between you and that other person, and that's something... It's important not to blame them for that. Um, you can blame them for other things if, you know... And there were definitely other other yeah, aspects. Yeah, they were unnecessarily of, cruel. Uh, um, there were there were definitely aspects of how that relationship ended that were um, that were not my fault. But how oh, I, how I how I emotionally dealt with it afterwards that's was all not. on me. And, and this is um, not what actually happened. But the example would be like it's we, still if someone decides to break up with someone via text. I don't like I don't like that word. We'll we'll edit it out. So um, it's it's it's. Like, but there it's, are certain yeah. ways that things go down that are that are still just like that's not cool, man. Yeah. At least have the. the I, I will the admit that wasn't a swear. It's just a word I don't really like. Call it a little jingle, so I don't forget about it. It wasn't a swear, and I'm not putting money in the job. But I'll count it from here on out. Okay. I'm adding it to the added list. to the repertoire. It's not a swear. Yeah, I know. Um. Anyhow, relationship issues to one side. Yeah. Um, I did enjoy the. You you really fish got thing. you love the fish thing. I love the fish thing. And I and I, I I was fascinated by that mech. I love how it's just like I was like, is that one of those fish things? And it was one yeah. of those fish things. And he was scooping people into his bucket. Um, I'm really curious. His bucket was really weird. It didn't look like any bucket I've ever seen anyone use. Yeah. In any. They like, refer to it as a bottle. Where I have seen people. That was a weird translation. Use like what. Any media, be it like live action or anime, where I have seen people do the fish flipping game. Yeah. The bowls are like little plastic bowls. Yeah. Almost like our cereal bowls. Exactly. They are not weird looking. That thing almost looked like a, like a pomegranate. Yeah, a little bit. I'm actually looking to see if there's anything. About his pomegranate? Um. Okay. Yeah, they just refer to it as a fish bowl. Uh, which I guess it kind of is. It's just a very odd, uh, organic-looking fishbowl. Yeah, well, no, fishbowl barrier is the thing he did later. Well, yeah, but uh, he was putting people into his fishbowl, okay. is how they refer to it. For some reason, our tra the translation we watched referred to it as a bottle. A uh, that was a little weird. But, yeah, it was, it was a fishbowl. Um... I mean, I, one the thing that I, like one that, thing I rubbles, felt a little weird about. fishbowl barrier was shaped like that with the glass. Yeah, bottles. it looked like a like a regular fishbowl. But I don't understand why it was all like red and. I don't know. It's this weird organic thing. Fleshy. <laughs> um, and like and a fishbowl made of meat. And I'm kind of curious. Like, did Ghosh eat some people at the beginning? I feel like she might have. Because yeah. she kind of started to do this and then it cut away and I'm like was she about to and we didn't know it was in there at the time so I'm like is she about to drink whatever's in there I don't know so I'm like did Ghost eat some people like either she ate them or she was holding it up so she could look at the people and then she's taking maybe. them somewhere and she has them still captive maybe, because maybe. we never freed the ones Ghost had well we don't know if she took them out of there the the here's the thing we don't know how many people there there were to begin with we don't know how many people he, he may have captured on his second run. It oh, might have all yeah. been the same group, and then they released everybody. We don't know for certain. That was just kind of ambiguous because we I'm didn't know. I'm a little concerned what was in there she may first. have pulled the people out and then sent them out with an empty bucket, which means that I, she might have she's, captives. I don't know what her fat. She had a weird fascination with the uh, with the people in the fishbowl. I don't know if it was because uh, she wanted to eat them or she wanted to keep them as pets. It was weird either way. I don't know if they were intending to feed them to Boss Dugriano. I don't know what the end game was for the fish people. I, yeah, fish people. But they don't look anything like fish people. They're just people in a fish Yeah, bowl. they just get turned into... They get turned into a goldfish and then turned back into a person once they're inside the fish bowl for some reason. It's strange. Um, because... The mechanics of all that were, were I mean, a little odd. I guess the reason odd. they turn back into people inside the fish bowl is because it would be really hard for the Power Rangers to shoot their guns as goldfish. Yeah, pretty much. It was just not the Power plot. Rangers, the Sentai Rangers. You know what I mean. It was just the Power plot Rangers would have had a really hard time shooting their gun as goldfish. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, that was a bit of an odd uh, monster mechanic 
and I wasn't quite sure entirely where it was all going. I mean, he is a goldfish, though. Yeah, yeah, he is. I mean, for some reason, his shorts are goldfish eyeballs. Yep, it was. He's he's a he's a fisherman. And his head is a goldfish tail. Yep. Um. I didn't even notice any of that in the previews from last time. All I saw was, was like poi, jumping right? around, and I was like, "Is that a poi?" Yeah. Only I didn't know what a poi was, so I just like, "Is that one of those flippy things for fish? For the fish game?" They play the fish game with the little poi, like we play the fish game where you put the ping pong ball in. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where you, the, like, the carnival game. Right. Yeah. Only, just like our fish, their fish just keep dying. It, it <laughs> seems like an... It seems like animal cruelty. Uh, yeah, play. exactly. Like. So does the ping pong ball game, as far as I'm concerned, because... Are you actually throwing a ping pong ball into a bowl with the fish in it? Yes. I thought it was you throw it into a bowl and then you won a goldfish. There are a bunch of bowls, only some of them have fish. If your ping pong ball lands in a bowl that has fish, you get the fish. Now you see, I thought it was if your ping pong ball lands in one that has like a fake fish in it, then you got the real fish. I mean, maybe. Because otherwise it seems like that's just you're trying to kill the fish that you can then take home, which seems weird. What's a ping pong ball, babe? Yeah, I guess. That being said, these fish are never taken very good care of. You bring the fish home and like nine times out of ten it's dead in two days. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I never played this game. It's all horrible. Uh, we're we're if you terrible want an actual goldfish. goldfish, then go to an aquarium store and get a proper goldfish. Poor goldfish. <laughs> the ones that they have at, at the carnival are... At least they don't remember much of their torment. That's not true. Oh. The Mythbusters proved it. Oh. Goldfish do not have three-second memories. Oh. Goldfish are, in fact, capable of learning. Oh. Poor goldfish. And will remember several days later. Oh. They taught them to run a maze. What? And That's super cool. The goldfish could run the maze, and they didn't change the maze. Huh. And every time the goldfish ran the maze faster because it remembered. That's nice. And then they didn't for a while, and then they put the goldfish back in. It ran the maze again. Huh. And it's not a square maze. What it was was it was a long fish tank. Yeah. With um, barriers. Yeah. And there's like a hole in the upper left, then a hole in the lower right, then a hole in the middle, then a hole in the whoo. And uh, the That's barriers cool. were clear. Yeah. So the fish had to remember where the holes were. Right, right. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool little myth bust. Anyway, yeah, they proved that fish, uh, goldfish learn and remember. <laughs> so be nice to goldfish and don't yeah. put them in those tiny little bowls. They hate it. So so I think to, to sort of sum things up... Um, goldfish! Goldfish. I want crackers. <laughs> <laughs> um, cheesy crackers. Um... But yeah, this was uh, this episode. Uh, it definitely had some fun elements, but it was also had a lot of problematic elements. Specifically, it was just weird. It was a little bit of an odd episode, the primarily because it highlighted and a weird animal abuse of carnival game. And yeah, there were. De- I don't this know. This was an uncomfortable. This episode. This was a little bit of an uncomfortable episode. <laughs> I I feel like a certain level of it is cultural dissonance, but even so, it's. Well, the awkward. fish game probably is a little bit cultural dissonance, but I don't think the dating thing is. I don't know. I don't know if they have different approaches to relationships in I mean, Japan. Well, yes, but not in that way. Yeah. Like, we saw a better example of that with Kichiro and the girl who kept bringing him flowers. And yeah, that's true. That was that a was love the, confession and he didn't... Yeah, that was definitely something with Japanese tradition that was more of a, of a foreign aspect to us. This just seems to be a guy who's bumbling along trying to get a girl to like him who yeah. does not like him. Yeah, which honestly is an issue that we have here in America. Exactly, that's what I'm which saying. Is, I which is why we went off on such a topic with that. Yes. Um, such a tangent. Uh, we do not know yet what the deal is with the piece of treasure that, that Noelle picked up. Yeah, that's, the that's submarine-looking the big, thing. That's the big question for the next episode, I imagine. This is, the, um, another question or, or moving I forward. Is, is if the submarine-looking thing is just chilling in the book. <sighs> How many other usable vehicles are just chilling in the book? Mm-hmm. We'll see. It's interesting that uh, Kogre had... I thought, actually, that calls to mind something particularly interesting. Kogre had a treasure that we haven't seen before. It wasn't something that the Lupin Rangers had collected at any point in the show. Well, I don't know that everything was stolen. Yeah. I so think some of it was still in the book. Well, I'm just saying, it, it calls to mind, what other 
uh, treasures might be on reserve that we don't know about in that book. Which is basically what I was saying yeah. when I said how many more of these things are in there. How yeah. many more of these vehicles, usable, how many more usable treasures are there in that book? Yeah. Because some of them or, are clearly or, not usable. Or other treasures that just might not be with the ganglers. Because we've already established several treasures were in the possession of the GSPO, not the ganglers. Correct. Um, the thing of it is, is that a lot of them aren't usable. Like, true. Humans can't do anything with most of them. But even if they're not usable, like, where they might be and how that might play into the whole, you know, wish-granting aspect of things. There's definitely Gotta some questions catch going on. All. Um, but yeah, we're coming up on an hour, though, so we should probably wrap things up. All right. Um, so I, uh, so until, uh, until next time, farewell, <laughs> Ranger fans, and let the power protect you. Stack that smiles back, goldfish. goldfish.